Offices nationwide weighing in around the water cooler on Representative Todd Aiken's controversial comments on rape. What does that mean in your own workplace? How much should you be limiting political talk? What kind of trouble can it get your employees into? Susan Solovic, she is CEO of It's Your Biz, always looking at these issues for small businesses. You know, people always think it's a free country. We should be able to say what we want in the workplace. I don't know a workplace that hasn't been talk talking about Representative right. Aiken's comments. <laughs> you say not necessarily the best place to do it, though. Right, exactly. And by the way, I'm so embarrassed because I'm from Missouri, you know? Right. <laughs> so, But yes, you're right. There's a time and a place for everything. When you're at work, you're there to do your job, not to advocate for a political candidate or a political issue. But the real problem is because everybody has strong beliefs, in, and particularly in a highly contested an election like this one is going to be. And that creates conflict in the workplace, which creates dissension, and you want to build teams, not dissension in your workplace. And what happens then as an employer that hits your productivity, it hits your bottom line, it can increase employee turnover, and it can even cost you customers and clients. So it really has no place in the workplace. Now, tangible steps on how to limit it. I mean, it sounds good in theory. All right, let's keep politics out of the workplace. A kind of easier said than done. I'm putting right. you on the spot here. But, <laughs> okay. I mean, specifically, do you tell people you cannot have any signage at your desk? I mean, that seems like the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. How do you begin to rein it in, Susan? Well, okay, let's talk about the signage first. So, yes, signage, you know, it's, it's actually you're not verbalizing it, but you're putting your political beliefs out there. The problem with that is it's not just that it causes conflict internally. Let's say that you have a customer or client who comes into your office place, it could look like your business is endorsing that position or that candidate. Right. Not a good thing to have. So you should probably just forbid that. The other thing is you want to discourage conversation. So you're talking about that water cooler conversation. Wendy, here's the thing. It's not just about conflict, though. This could actually rise to the level of harassment. So particularly if you're talking about political issues like immigration, mm -hmm. or you're talking about the Aiken issue, right. women's rights. Right. And if some people are offended in the workplace by those conversations, they could argue that it creates a hostile and oppressive work environment, which would increase the liability for an employer. So there's certain hot button subjects that are just going to simply be a greater liability if people are discussing those. Would you suggest that the, the, the head of the business sort of just delicately step in and say, look, guys, you know, save it for outside of the workplace, you know, let's, let's after hours. I mean, what's the right way to kind of rein that in without sure. being, you know, too well, hard? Well, you know, I don't think it should be real delicate. I should think it should be very <laughs> okay. clear. You're the boss. It's your workplace. It's your bottom line. So I would absolutely have a conversation with your employers or with your employees that they shouldn't be having this conversation in the workplace take it outside, talk about it at lunch if they want, but it has no place in the office. I'd be very clear about that. And I'd also explain to them, you know, what risk it could mean for the business and their jobs. And I assume on voting day, I mean, you know, people want to go out and vote. Do you need to have a clear policy about that? Like sure. when people can go vote? Right. Some employers give you a little latitude on voting day because they want to encourage voting. But you need to check with your employer and, and let your employees know what is your policy? Can they come in a little bit late? Can they take a little extra time at their lunch hour? Or maybe even just take off in the middle of the day when it's not so crowded to go vote. Some people allow that, some right. people don't. That's your choice. The biggest thing though, uh, Wendy, is just to remember to be respectful. It's it's like religion. You know, everybody has a right to their opinion. You don't want to have to push, you don't want to be in the situation of pushing your beliefs on someone else. And a smart point you make about the fact that clients could come in and be offended one way or the other. Good, right. good point, Susan. Yes. All right, Susan Solovic, she is CEO of It's Your Biz. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Wendy.